Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2022 Cadillac Escalade. This is the Platinum Trail Level. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Snell Cadillac in Mankato, Minnesota. This is a total of 38 inches of screen from left to right. There are three basic screens. You've got the one on the left here, that is a touch screen, that's 7.2. Then you've got the one in the middle right here, that's about a 14.9. And then you've got a 16.2 uh, inch screen for the infotainment. And it, Cadillac has curved it all to the, the, the shape of the dashboard so it looks like it belongs there. It is an OLED system. So that means that the, the, the blacks are blacker and the other colors are more vibrant. And I, I tell you what, just from looking at it here with the few colors that we have going, the reds are really bright, the greens are bright, the blacks are definitely very dark. You don't uh, um, get any sort of that bluish background look. So. Um, we're going to start with the driver's information screen. And uh, so <laughs> this is just so neat. So over on the left at the 7.2 inch screen, you've got three basic choices. Okay. The first one here was it shows them the road, gives you trip one, and then it's touch. So you just swipe, gives you trip two, and you swipe again, and it gives you a calm screen. So if you don't want anything there, you can have that. Okay. It's very responsive. Okay. If I go to the gauge button here, Okay, I can have four things show up in the driver's information screen. I can have the gauges, okay, and, and those are customizable from, from what you see, but we'll start with that view. Then I can go to map, and you can have a full screen navigation map. And of course, it puts your speed and your RPM still down the left, your fuel gauge, all the basic things are still there, but that full screen uh, navigation map. I can also have an augmented reality camera and that is just super cool when you're going down. Uh, right now, the, the, the front camera is covered by a shield that we have, but it uses the front camera and overlays navigation directions. So, for instance, if you're supposed to take a right, it'll show you a stream of arrows uh, up in the screen, okay? Like it's standing up looking at you. It gives you a little uh, icon that puts you, it shows you what lane you should be in. It's just really, really neat. And then of course you have night vision that uses a, a night vision camera and you can see the vehicles uh, ahead of us there. But that is really cool uh, at night. All right, then you go over to the HUD display. Okay, and at the HUD display, you can adjust the height of it. It's a 15 inch HUD display. You can adjust the brightness of it. All right, and then if I if I'm in night vision, which I'm in now, I get a fourth option down here, and then I can increase or decrease the sharpness and then the brightness of it, which makes absolute sense. All right, I'm gonna go back there. So that's a 7.2 inch screen. Now over in the middle, I'm gonna go back to the gauge view. Okay, over in the middle here, you have got basically an, uh, uh, an information screen on the left of the speedometer, you've got another one on the right, and then you've got the, the analog looking screen, it's all digital, and then you've got the digital uh, miles per hour. Then of course below you've got your RPM, on the, on the left, on the right you've got your fuel gauge, your gear selector, uh, what four wheel drive mode you're in, how many miles till empty. Um, and so uh, over on the far left, uh, you have a compass and then you have your ride height indicator. So you can customize the left side of the screen to be any number of things. The right side is mostly media. Uh, you do have a few controls for that on your steering wheel. For instance, if I press the uh, music button uh, symbol on the steering wheel, I can see favorites, I can see my sources, I can switch between them. I can uh, go between my favorites by just pressing on the up down arrows, okay? Uh, and then I can scroll through all the different channels, all the different favorites right here, okay? If I click, then that's what it's gonna play, all right? Uh, and then anytime I wanna go back, I just hit the music button again, it's like a back button, and I can switch sources. So those controls are right on your steering wheel, uh, in addition to your uh, volume up, volume down, and mute. Um, now. To customize anything else, you have to do it from the infotainment screen. So we're going to show you that part when we get to the infotainment screen part. So on the left side of the steering wheel, you've got your cruise control buttons right here, uh, off, 
on, resume is, is push this up, uh, uh, and then to decrease the speed or set it, you can go down. You've got um, your gap setter right here for your adaptive cruise control. This does not have super cruise. It's the only thing it does not have on it. Uh, over here on the on the bo bottom silver buttons, you've got your voice command as is typically seen, but you also have a um, voice uh, enhancement listening system. So if you press that and then you just start talking, it's a conversation enhancement. The microphones pick you up and then amplifies your voice through the speakers. And then in the third row, there's another set of mics to allow those people in the third row to be heard better. This is a dummy button, but they've uh, actually ingrained it really nicely with some lines. Now, everything else in the dashboard you need to do from the infotainment screen. All right, so that being said, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so the infotainment screen is 16.9 inches uh, as measured diagonally, and it is, has an AKG reference sound system. So there's two different sounds as you can get. The reference is the top of the line. This is the one with 36 speakers. Now, on top of that, it's got three amplifiers running a total of 28 channels. Now, what that tells you is that each speaker in this car his coming the, the signal from the amplifier is set to a specific frequency so it is specializing every speaker in the car to make sure it gets the best sound possible it also has three different woofers so what does this have on it well of course it has wireless apple carplay it has wireless android auto it's got am and fm and hd radio it's got sirius xm uh, it also has um, a wi-fi hotspot that's built in that's not running off your phone you pay for it separately um, it also has um, um, Alexa, and so you can control things right from there as well. So, in taking a look at the screen itself, it is fully customizable. So, for instance, you know, this is the app view. You've got a basic menu right here. That's customizable. This is customizable. And then we have what we call the card screen, which is, you know, maybe the, the, the four or five things that you use most commonly. So... Let's talk about how to customize each of those areas, and then we'll get into all the apps. So let's start with this row. So if I go to the apps and I say, well, you know what? I want the rear climate. I can just drag it right over here and put it on top of, say, vehicle information. And there I go. Now, it puts vehicle information back here. It keeps rear climate in here. Um, but... I'm going to change that back because this obviously is not our car, but that's how you customize it. If you want to change the order of something, just click it down and change the order. I mean, it's just, it's really intuitive. Just push and hold. Let's see. There we go. So absolutely cool. Now I'm just going to click cancel. I'm going to show you how to customize these ones. So if you want apps in a particular order, so for instance, right now we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto down here. They're grayed out. I'm not sure they're going to, oh, they are going to let me move them. So I'm going to go up here. I want Apple CarPlay first, and then I want navigation second, and so on. You can do that. Okay. If you want to go to the other screen, you can grab it and just drag it over, and then it goes to the next screen. Now, your card screen, okay? If I want to change what's in here, I go over here, click and hold. All right, now I can say replace and I can pick rear climate, notification, or time and date, okay? I'm gonna hit cancel, but you can hit replace on any of these and that those are your choices right there. Okay, with those widgets. Okay, now um, let's let's talk about uh, what's in here. So <clears throat> this is the home screen, and uh, these icons, what you see here and here, they're identical. They do the same thing. So I'm just going to go uh, from here. But let's go into audio for a minute. I like how they list all of your uh, your sources just right here. Okay, you have a little slide that you can do. Right now, I don't have anything else plugged in. So if I had my phone plugged in uh, through Apple CarPlay, that would maybe appear and be an extra thing. USBs would be an extra thing. And then you'd have a few more things. All right, so here's FM. So easy to swipe through the screen. And I just, I, I love how they just 
come up and fold away. That is just really cool. Um, of course, you can tune like this. Okay, you can hit this button and you can tune like this. You can also still use these buttons here. That's like a like a seek. You can mark something as a favorite if you want. Okay, to get out of that, I'm gonna go back here. Okay, H HD radio's off there. HD radio's on. You'll see the little HD symbol come up. Okay, uh, you got another favorite button right here, and then you've got a station list right here. Okay, I, I love how everything is just slanted and curved towards the driver. It's just really nice. All right, and the last thing, of course, you need to have settings, and then under settings, you have another cool item. The front passenger, passenger can adjust their volume separate from the drivers. So if I go here, then I can set the front passenger to be different than the driver's seat. Okay, that's where the driver's set right now. So, I mean, that is just really cool. Okay, so let's go back. If I look at sound and go to sound mode, you've got front. Okay, and do you notice this slider down here? I can slide and make it completely stereo sound or complete surround 3D, an immersive 360 experience. You can see it. And you notice it's wrapped around the driver and passenger. So now I go to the rear and I can turn theirs to stereo. It's separate controls for the front and rear row. Just amazing what they've included in here. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here. Oops, let's uh, let's go back here to uh, settings for a minute. All right, adaptive volume is either just uh, going to be on or off. That that basically adjusts your volume according to your speed. Um, HD radio, you can turn that off. Uh, radio data system. That's if you have that turned on and the radio station is producing a data stream, it'll give you things like the name of the artist and you know the album, that kind of stuff. You can manage phones, and then metadata corrector. <clears throat> so. What that is, is it, it looks at any device that's plugged into it that's, that's streaming music into it, either via Bluetooth or, or, or like a phone uh, wired connection, uh, which this guy's car has all wireless connections, so you wouldn't need that. But it, it, that data gets, gets downgraded. And so this is a way to correct that and bring up the quality of the sound. Okay, that's the radio. Now, uh, just to show you, AM looks the same, you get the same controls, you run it the same way, and Sirius XM is the same way as well. So you, if you can control one of these, you can control all three of them. All right, let's go back to home for a minute. Let's take a look at this navigation. All right, the map is super responsive. I mean, just, I just absolutely love it. Okay, you can twist it, all right? So the question is, how do you plot a course? Well, let's take a look at search. And you can enter a keyword if you want, or you can just list a, 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 um, like a category. So I want food, and I want fast food. I want McDonald's, and I'm going to hit go. If for some reason you want to mute the navigation voice, you can just click there and it will mute. You gotta, gotta wait for that to disappear and then you can unmute it again. Okay, um, so this, this is the screen you get. It's nice to leave it up here. You've got an end trip right here. Now, I, I don't know because we can't drive the vehicle. So I, in, if you have one of these and you know, let us know in the comments below, but I, this doesn't disappear. So you've got this screen here, which doesn't use the whole screen. Well, guidance is now finished. Um, as you can see, if you accidentally touch that button, it will cancel the route, which is nice. I like it that they leave a button that says cancel route right up there. All right, the other way to do it is through voice command. So if I press the voice command button and just release it quickly. What would you like? Go to McDonald's. One moment, please. Okay, searching for McDonald's nearby. I'm finding more than one match because it may take you a while to choose. Please do so manually from the display. Okay. Please proceed to the highlighted road. So you can do everything through voice command there, except for at the Our very end. Is now finished. So that, that was search. You can look under recents, you can look under favorites. Then if you go up a little bit, you get settings. 
right? This is where you can change some kind of some one-time things on your navigations. If you want more settings, you can click here, navigation voice control. All right, here's the volume level for that. If you don't want it quite so loud, you can, you can set that. Directional navigation prompts. All right, now here's another cool thing. So if this is turned on, you're gonna take a right turn. The direction, it does two things. First of all, the voice you hear for a right-hand turn comes from the right-hand speaker. Hence why it's nice to have those speakers in the, in the headrest, all right? Uh, if you can take a left-hand turn, they come from the left speaker. Not, not only are they directional like that, but the, the further you are away from your turn, the softer the prompt is. The closer you get to your turn, the louder the prompt is. That was all under navigation and settings. So let's go back here and we're going to hook up a phone. So right now I have nothing hooked up and I'm, so I'm gonna take my phone, which is a, an Apple phone, and I'm just gonna to go to Bluetooth. I'm gonna make sure my Bluetooth is on, okay? And then I'm looking for a device. So I'm gonna hit connect phone and it should say my Cadillac. So I'm, I'm waiting for my phone to pop it up. There it comes, my Cadillac. I'm gonna pair. It wants to know if the number on my screen matches the number on their screen. It does. I'm gonna hit pair there. I'm gonna hit pair on this screen. And then I'm gonna just hit okay. Okay, now do I want favorites to, uh, contacts and favorites to sync. That's the message on my phone. If this is your car, you wanna click allow. I'm gonna click don't allow because it's not my car. And there I go, all right? All right, so now it's gonna go ahead and connect to Apple CarPlay. All right, on my phone it asked me, do I wanna use CarPlay with Cadillac? Yes. So I clicked the yes on there and it should be connecting and I should be able to turn my phone off. Yep. And then the wireless charger for this is actually right behind the hazard buttons. It's a vertical one. You just set your phone down there. It's got a nice firm grip. So, I mean, heaven forbid you get into an accident, your phone's not going to go sliding off. Okay. Apple CarPlay. Uh, either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto is like the, the next best thing after Bluetooth. So, these are your most recently used apps. These are all the apps on your phone that work with this car. The nice thing is, even though this car has built-in navigation, you notice I get Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze, okay? And in addition to my music sources, Pandora, um, Amazon Music, um, I think uh, Audiobooks was on there somewhere. Uh, yep, right there. So really, really nice. Now, the button down here gives you a split screen view for your uh, Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. This is, of course, navigation. That is search for navigation. And then this, uh-huh, well, I was watching Top Gear. All right, so that's your media. Um, if I press it again, it goes back to this screen. The other thing that you can do is, even with Apple CarPlay, you can press and hold the voice command button and it goes through um, to your phone. So you get Siri or Google Assistant, like this. Siri, open Pandora. And there you go. So even when you're using just this, uh, Apple CarPlay, you still have voice control. Just absolutely, absolutely amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go back to home. Under vehicle information, I get a whole bunch of screens. So for instance, transmission fluid temperature, uh, air filter life, brake pad life, okay? Traction and stability, if it's on or off, clicking on it, then you can adjust it. <laughs> um, engine hour total time, date and time. Now I'm gonna slide backwards, that's the screen we saw. Okay, um, I have coolant temperature, trailer brake, uh, gain and output, oil pressure, um, timer, I've got a degree of angle of the vehicle, battery voltage, um, average speed, efficiency gauge, fuel economy, uh, the best fuel economy, and then uh, notifications, oil life, and tire pressure. Now, in addition to this, if you want one of those gauges to go over to your, infotain your driver's information screen, just click on it, show and cluster. 
and it appears on the left hand side. Okay, so then you just click remove from cluster. I mean, that is just really, really cool. So then you can do that on any of those. Now, in addition to that, you can customize this screen, of course. But let's say you're, uh, you're trailering, all right? So maybe you want your coolant temp, but your battery voltage isn't as important. So if I go over here and select transmission fluid temperature, okay, let me go back here, click and hold, all right, drag it over, and I go here. Now I got transmission. Now it bumped um, the battery voltage one over and got rid of my brake. Oops. So I'm going to go back over here one more. I'm going to try and move this one. I'm, I'm not quick enough here. Okay. There you go. So, and then I can say, well, I want this one to be over here. There you go. So you can set it up for, for screens that are very helpful, like for towing, things you'd want to know. So all customizable. I mean, just hoo ya. Very, very neat. So uh, under settings here, um, this is where you can do some customizing uh, on the driver's information screen. So if I hit display and then I hit instrument cluster, you're going to get a layout for the gauges. You're going to get a left view, a right view, and then speed information. So if I click here on layout of the gauges, this is the same four choices you get in the 7.2 inch screen on the far left. So I won't do that again. It's the same thing. Okay. But if I go to left view, I can select between any one of these things. Now, you'll notice that these things showed up in the vehicle information cards as we were going through, but this is another place. So if I want transmission temperature to show up in my left gauge, I can do that. I can have air filter life show up in there. I can have coolant temperature show up. Uh, I can do the trailer brake gain and output right there. Um, brake pad life, um, oil pressure. Okay, I can do a battery voltage, um, engine hours. I mean, it's just off-road gauges. That's pretty cool. That's where you get to your angles right there. Um, you can do a timer, average speed, an efficiency gauge, uh, fuel economy right here. You've got tire pressure, um, oil life. Um, you can turn it off completely if you like a, a calmer screen. Um, if I go down here further, um, transmission fluid temperature, coolant temperature. I mean, just really cool what you can customize on that left screen. Now, if I go down here and say right view, I can say I want that off and you see that disappear. I can say just audio, just navigation, which is blank because there's nothing running right now. Or I can say audio and navigation. That's where I would leave that particular one if it were my car. You can also select speed information and say, what do I want displayed? Do I want digital speedometer? No, that disappears. Now you just have, well, <laughs> okay, you still have a digital speedometer, but it's the, the, the digital number has disappeared out of the middle. Um, if you don't want speed sign recognition, that disappears off your dash. And if you don't want a speed warning color, okay, then you could turn that off. Okay, um, just so that's where you can customize the driver's information screen. Now I'm gonna go back for a minute. You can turn this conversation enhancement to normal, high, or off. And you can also turn off that rear microphone if you don't. But you can see that now it's right, it's right in the ceiling in the third row. Um, we're gonna leave, of course, normal. And that's that, of course, that uh, little ear icon, silver button on the left side of the steering wheel. And let's see if we go down to um, time and date in unit, you, this is where you can adjust those things right here. Now, you don't have to go into all this to change the clock or the time. You just simply click on the clock and it brings you to it. All right, so you don't have to remember where all that is. Okay, let's go to vehicle. Um, collision stuff. This is where your safety stuff is. So you got alert, okay? Uh, alerts, uh, uh, safety alert seat. So what's going to happen is your seat's going to vibrate. It's just, that is, uh, it, it's a way of catching your attention. Let me tell you when you're not used to it. You can also turn that part off and say, I just want beeps. All right. Uh, automatic emergency braking, um, off alert or alert and brake. And these are all pretty much the same. You can adjust these. So I won't go through all of them, but this is where they, where, where they're on. Okay. 
So that's where those are. Okay, um, ride height, okay? Uh, automatic entry and egress, you can have that on or off so that when you shut the car off, it lowers, and when you start the car up, it automatically raises. All right, okay. Then, of course, um, you got power door locks, remote unlock and lock start, all these things that I don't have time to go over, but this is where they are, and they work all the same way. You just look at the title, click on it, and say, yep, I want my seats to auto cool uh, or auto heat if, if um, it's depending on the temperature, if I remote start the vehicle. That's where they are. Now, if you can also go to here and hit search. Um, easier just to watch our video, but you can go in there and type keywords to bring up things. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home screen for a minute. All right, so that was all under settings. All right, so we're gonna go over to one more screen. This truck uh, comes with a trailering package. In addition to this, the owner had a trailering camera also installed on there. And you can't show that because obviously there's no trailer hooked up, but a trailering app um, will, it does a lot of things. So um, you can look at the different cameras, you can look at the, you know, the, the, the trailer profile, you can go through a checklist, you can have different trailers added, and you can go into your settings, so you can say uh, trailer detection alert on or off, turn signal activated view on or off, trailer length indicator, theft alert, tow haul reminder, maintenance alerts. Uh, but I mean, it's just, it's really, really neat. Now, let's go back to home for a minute. So if I click on the camera icon, all right, so right now I've got the front camera. It's, I have normal view, I have a wide view, I have an overhead view right at the front of the vehicle there, and I've got a side-by-side -side view, left side, right side, okay? If I go to the back camera, I got the same choices, normal, wide, overhead, right down the tailgate and side by side, left side, right side, looking backwards, okay? If I go here, I get a 360 camera, like we see, we've see we seen in some of the other cars, uh, but I can click on any of these cameras and it just rotates around. I mean, that is just way cool. All right, you got, of course, your trailering camera, which I don't have right now, but you got a hitch, you got a side, you got a rear and a side and rear view. Um, you can turn your uh, dynamic guidelines on or off. And then, of course, uh, I can't click on that now because we don't have a trailer hooked up. But just an amazing uh, system. And those are dynamic swivel guidelines, so they swivel. Now, this also has auto parking, in and out, parallel and perpendicular. So if you just click on that, you can start it. You can say, I want a parallel park. I want to do a per perpendicular park. I want to do it on the right side. I want to do it on the left side. And other than... You, you know, you have to be below six, mile, six miles an hour or below. And then when it senses the opening, and it has, to have, it has to have at least one car in the lot to judge by. Okay, if there's no cars in the lot, it, it, it's not going to, to do that part for you. But uh, it'll tell you, when it senses an opening, it'll tell you to stop, it'll tell you to put it in reverse. And from there on out, it does everything, including stopping and putting the vehicle in park for you. You want to get out of a spot, you just click, you can click departure. I can't because I'm not in gear. Uh, and then you could do the same thing. I want to get out. It's just amazing. And they work. And if you've never used them, they're a little scary to use at first because they get really close to cars. But they work fine. All right. Ambient lighting. Of course, this has ambient lighting. So down here, you can select the different colors. Right. You do, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a piping all the way across. Red maybe comes across a little bit, or maybe this uh, purplish color that's in the doors. It's really, really nice. Um, one of the cool things is, you know, the way the glass comes down on the screen, all these little icons that you, know, you, you see starting when I, if I start up the car, they look like they're removed from the infotainment screen, like they're a separate layer. It, it's really kind of a neat thing. You can link everything to a drive mode or you can put it in a demo mode mode where it will then change colors all on its own. Okay, I'm gonna leave it back here where it was and you can turn the ambient lighting off. Okay, the one thing I'll mention is that I've been doing everything by touch, but down in the center console, you do have a rotary control knob Okay, and once you start get to the app screen, you notice how it turns into an oval shape. Okay, and and, it, and then it's a, like if you want to select something, you just push it. 
That's the driver's information screen, the infotainment screen, and the left-hand trip uh, HUD and gauge meter screen on the new 2022 Cadillac Escalade. Thanks for watching.